User authentication is required in almost every Rails application, including this blogging application here. Currently there's no form of user authentication, and I would like to add some by providing login and sign up links on the top right of this page here. Now in Rails, there are several gems to help add authentication to your app, such as Devise or OmniAuth. But sometimes if you just want simple password authentication, you may want to create it from scratch because it's really not that difficult. Let me show you how here. The first thing I need to do is add a signup form to this app for creating a new user record and then put a link to it on the top right of this page here. So this means we'll need to generate some kind of user model and controller to handle the signup process. I'm going to use the resource generator to do this, which is similar to the scaffold generator except it doesn't fill in all of the controller actions. And I'm going to name the model user and give it an email string field and a password digest string field as well. Now, the password digest is an important name because it's the default name that is used with the has secure password feature in Rails that we'll be using in this episode. So you can see that generated the user model and controller, so I'll need to migrate the database to create that user's table. Now going into that generated user model, I'm going to add a call into here for has secure password, which was introduced in Rails 3.1 and adds some simple authentication support to the user model using that password digest column. Now to get has secure password working in Rails, you also need to go into your gem file and uncomment this gem called pcrypt ruby to handle the hashing of the password to the database. Now make sure to run the bundle command to install the gem and to restart your app for the changes to take effect. Another thing that's important to set in the user model is a call to attribute accessible to specify which attributes the user can set through the form. So here you might specify email and password and password confirmation or whatever other fields you want on the signup form. So this way, if maybe we added an admin column to the database, the user wouldn't be able to set that through mass assignment. Now you might also want to add some validations to the user model, such as maybe validates uniqueness of email or whatever other identifier you want to use on your user model. You can validate the format of the email, maybe the length of the password and so on. Uh, you don't need to validate the presence of the password or the password confirmation because that's automatically going to be handled for you by has secure password. All right, so this user model is looking pretty good. Let's move on to creating the signup form. And I will do that inside of the user's controller, which was generated earlier. But right now it's currently blank, so we need to make a couple of actions in here to handle the creation of a user. Now these are pretty standard, so I'm just going to paste them in. Uh, we have a new action, which is going to create a new user instance and then display the signup form. And then a create action, which will save the user to the database and then redisplay the form if there are validation errors. So now we just need that new template to handle the signup form. And I'll just paste in the code for this form as well because it is fairly standard. Uh, we just have a form for our user model, display any validation errors if there are any, and then we have three fields here for email, password, and password confirmation, and that's it. And then we just need a link to this form. I'm going to put it inside of my application layout file here. I already have a little user header section to put it in. You can put it anywhere you want in your application. We'll just say link to sign up and that should go to the uh, new user path. So let's give this a try. Reloading this page here shows us the signup link. Clicking it brings us to the form, and let's try filling out something in here. And if I try to create the user without the confirmation, I get validation error like I expect. Filling that all in creates the user successfully. That works. Now, so far we haven't done any authentication. We've just created a user record. To do authentication, I need some kind of login form. So let me make a form and then add a login link to the top right here. I'm going to generate a new controller to handle the login form. I'll call it sessions and I'll give it a new action. Now I need to make some adjustments to the routes that were generated because the sessions controller is a restful style controller. I'm going to specify resources, sessions in the routes and I'll just delete the generated route. So here's what that sessions controller looks like along with the generated new action. And I'll leave this new action blank, but I do want to change the view for this because I want the login form to go into here. So I'll just paste in the code for this login form because it is pretty basic. Notice I'm using form tag instead of form four because I'm not really working off of a model here and I'm going to the sessions path. So this will trigger the create action in that sessions controller. 
and I have two fields here, email and password, and my login button. So now I just need to make that create action, which is where that form will get submitted to. And this is where the actual authentication happens. So the first thing I'll need to do is find a user that matches the email that the user typed in. And we'll just use that email field. And then I just need to check if a user was found matching that email and if the password matches. And to check that, I can call authenticate on the user, which is a method that has secure password provides us and just pass the password to it. And so this will return either true or false depending on if the password matches. And if it does match, uh, let's store the user ID in a session and then redirect to the uh, root URL with a notice saying logged in. And then otherwise, I'll re-render the login form and display a flash message using flash now so it shows up on the immediate page saying uh, email or password is invalid. And there we go. That's really all there is to it to handle the authentication logic. And now to finish this up, we just need to go into the layout file and add a link next to the signup link saying log in. And this will go to the new session path. So it'll say sign up or log in. Now let's try this out. Reloading this page shows us the login link. And if I click on it, I get my login form. And if I enter in an invalid uh, password, and click login, it's going to tell me the email or password is invalid. If I type in the proper password, it'll say logged in. However, notice that it still shows up the sign up and login links, but instead it would be uh, nice to change the status to show that the user is currently logged in. To do this, we need some way to fetch the currently logged in user record, and I'll define this inside of the application controller so that it's available in all controllers. I'll just make a private method here called a current user. And then we can find that user model based off of the session's user ID because that is what we set inside of the session's controller when the user logged in. And we only want to do that if that session variable exists. Now this current user method will likely be called many times per request, so it's a good idea to cache this in an instance variable so that it will only be fetched one time per request. So this method is looking good, but it's currently only accessible from inside of the controller. It would be nice to fetch the current user from inside of the view as well. And to do that, you can call helper method in the controller here to turn that current user method into a helper method to access it from the view. Now with that in place, we can update our layout file to show something else here when the user is logged in. To do that, we just have to detect if the current user model exists, and if it does, it means they're logged in. So we can say logged in as, uh, let's say the current user's email address, but you might want to display something else like their username there instead, if you have that in the database. So that way, it'll show that they're logged in. And we could try this out by reloading the browser, and it now shows the proper logged in status. It would be nice though if there was some way to log out, so we need a log out link here in the menu as well. I'm going to make a new action inside of the sessions controller to handle this log out behavior. I'll just call it uh, destroy. And this behavior is pretty simple. I just set the user ID session variable to nil to clear it out. Now alternatively, you might want to clear the entire session by calling reset session, but I normally just stick to clearing out that one user ID variable. And then I'll just redirect to the uh, root URL with a notice saying logged out. And then going back to the application layout file, we can add that logout link right into here when the user's logged in. But pointing it to that destroy action can be a little bit tricky because the session path helper method kind of expects a ID to be passed in through here. And I usually just substitute the word current into here, but really you could pass in whatever you want because the controller action doesn't use the ID parameter. And then we can set the method for this link to a delete so it triggers that destroy action. Now reloading the page shows us that logout link, clicking on it triggers that destroy action, logging us out, it works. Now one thing you might wanna do is make these sign up and login URLs a little prettier because right now, Going to log in, it goes to slash session slash new, which really isn't that pretty. It would be nicer if it just said slash login. To do this, we can add a few custom routes. And I'm going to do that at the top of the routes file here, just pasting some in to handle the sign up, login, and logout paths and pointing them to the appropriate controller actions. Now, one thing to note about the logout path here is that I'm using a git request for this but you may wanna switch this to a delete request because technically it is changing the user state 
but I personally think it's okay to leave as a git request because it's not really doing any permanent damage. And then we can update the layout file to take advantage of these nice named routes. There we go, quite a bit cleaner now. One loose end that we've left untied is that when the user signs up on this site, it doesn't log them in automatically. It creates a user record, but they're still logged out. Now this is easy enough to fix by going to the user's controller create action, and when the user saves successfully, we can just log them in by setting the user ID session variable to that user's ID. Now if you find there's a lot of duplication in logic between the sessions controller logging in behavior and this behavior, you may want to abstract this out into some kind of controller method that can be shared between them. But here I think it's okay to have this minor duplication. So now when we sign up another user, it logs us in automatically. Yay! Now a common requirement when dealing with authentication is to ensure that the user is logged in before giving them access to a specific page. For example, if we go to a given article here, we have the ability to edit an article, but let's say we want to ensure that the user is logged in before they have the ability to edit an article. Now, since this is such common behavior, I'm going to define this in the application controller so that we can use it anywhere. I'll do this in a method called authorize, and if the user isn't authorized, I want to redirect them to the uh, login URL with an alert saying not authorized. And we only want to do that if the current user is nil, which means that they are not logged in. So with that defined, we can easily use this as a before filter on any controller action we want to protect, such as the articles controller edit and update actions. We can just say before filter authorize only on the edit and update actions. Now, because I am logged in, I am able to edit the article but if I log out and then try to edit an article again, I get the not authorized message. And you may want to improve this user experience depending on how your application works, but there's a basic functionality. If you have more complex authorization logic than this, you may want to use a gem such as CanCan to help out with this. So now we have a complete authentication solution built from scratch, and there are a variety of ways you can add on to this. For example, if you go to the user's controller, maybe you want a profile page or a, a way to update the user information, just add a show action or edit and update actions into the user's controller here to get that kind of behavior. Also, if you want to store the user's login in a permanent cookie instead of a temporary session, check out episode 274 where I show you how to add remember me functionality and also a way for the user to reset their password. Well, that's it for this episode on adding authentication from scratch. Users can now sign up, log in, or log out. Now, even if you do go with an authentication gem, I hope this gave you some insight on what might go on underneath the hood in those gems. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.